Hey everyone, welcome back to another interesting chapter of Learn Autosa Basics. Today, we'll be learning about what is Flash Bootloader and why do we need it. First, let's discuss what is an embedded system. An embedded system is a microprocessor or microcontroller based computer hardware system with software that is designed to perform a dedicated function, either as an independent system or as a part of a large system. Embedded systems are present everywhere you look. It can be as simple as digital wall clock or as complicated as adaptive cruise control in cars. Without microcontrollers, our lives would not only be less exciting, but we would lose a level of control over our world that we can no longer live without. Billions of microcontrollers are sold each year with the number continuously climbing. I am sure you might have noticed that your smartphone keeps warning you that you have an important update to be installed. Or if you have an automatic update on your PC, sometimes you restart your PC and it takes few minutes to finish updating the operating system. Have you ever wondered why do these companies roll out updates after the release of the product? This can be answered by looking at the type of software updates we receive. We can classify software updates into four major categories. First is feature update. For example, a new format, a new video format is supported in camera application of the phone. Second is bug fix. For example, there was a crash in camera software due to some specific settings which was not supposed to happen. So this is fixed during a bug fix software update. Then we have a security update. These updates are rolled out when there are new security threats discovered in the software which needs to be sorted out. Fourth, we have a quality enhancement. These updates enhance the quality of the overall product. And now, the next question is how to update the software? The answer to that question is rather simple. We just need another software called Flash Bootloader or just Bootloader which takes care of this. What is a Flash Bootloader? A Flash Bootloader or FPL is an application whose primary purpose is to allow a software to be updated without the use of a specialized hardware such as a JTAG programmer. There are many different sizes and flavors to embedded bootloaders. They can communicate over a variety of protocols such as USART, CAN, I2C, Ethernet, USB and the list goes on as many as protocols that exist. In the systems which have the capability to connect to the internet, the software update process is called flash over the air or simply FOTA. The bootloader allows a company to launch their products with a software that only fulfills a portion of their final feature set and then add features to their products once it has been launched into the market. But now let's consider a case of generic car which is not connected to the internet. How are you going to update the software in this case? Do you need to ship the units to the manufacturer every time the software needs to be updated? The obvious answer to these questions is absolutely not. And the primary reason is that most systems ship with the bootloader on board. When you take your car for the service next time, then with the help of special programmers such as diagnostic tool, the software can be updated. Before we discuss how the software is updated by bootloader, let's understand the jumping sequence between bootloader and the application. Let's first take an example of a personal computer. When you turn on the CPU, it starts in the bootloader mode. But to stay in the bootloader, it asks you to press a some specific function key. If the key is pressed before the certain timeout, the system stays in the bootloader. Otherwise, it loads the operating system. Now, let's understand how this is done in the embedded systems in general. When you turn on the system for the first time, the start address or the reset vector is loaded into the program counter. This in general is the starting address of the bootloader. Then, it checks if the bootloader flag is set or not. The bootloader flag can be either a GPIO or some fixed memory location. If the bootloader flag is set, that means the system needs to stay in the bootloader. If it is false, then we need to jump to the application software. The setting of bootloader flag can be done through application or through tester. When the flag is set during the application, then a software reset is performed to jump to the bootloader. 
As we already saw, the main purpose of bootloader is to update the software. Now let's understand how it happens in reality. Software update can be done via diagnostic tool or over the air. Client, which can be either ECU or a tester, establishes a communication link with the ECU to be updated via CAN, SPI, Ethernet, LIN or any other communication protocol. To know the authenticity of client, verification of client is done via seed or key exchange. If the verification is successful, then the bootloader flag is set and a software reset is performed. As we already saw that at the startup, it checks the bootloader flag and decides the path it needs to take in, and in this case, it will be to stay in the bootloader. Client then starts transmitting block by block, let's say around 512 or 1024 bytes and system stores the received software in RAM. Once the whole code is received, it is then written into the code flash memory. Then after the software update process is finished, the code flash software is verified for its integrity. Boot flag is reset and then a software reset is performed to jump to the application. Okay, now let's jump to the next topic and let's understand the types of FPL. In various embedded systems, depending upon the architecture and the system requirements, end-stage bootloader can be implemented. Popular bootloaders are of two stages in most of the embedded systems. We have first stage bootloader or a primary bootloader and a second stage bootloader or a secondary bootloader. Primary bootloader have only read access to the code flash and no write access. It is designed this way to make bootloader more secure. Let's take an example of Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has a primary bootloader in SOC which helps to jump to the bootloader present in the SD card. Secondary bootloaders are sent to primary bootloaders via various communication protocols. Then the execution of secondary bootloader is done from the RAM memory. Secondary bootloaders are responsible for writing the latest software into the code flash. For example, a secondary and a third stage bootloader resides in the SD card for Raspberry Pi devices. In some cases, these primary and the secondary bootloaders can be produced as a single bootloader in the embedded system. Bootloader can be more complex in some cases. Some of these features might not be present in every system around you, but they are still worth discussing. Let's talk about Secure Boot. Secure Boot is a feature in embedded systems in which, before jumping to a particular stage of bootloader, the CMAC or hash of next stage is generated and then compared with a pre-stored value. If it matches, then the software execution proceeds to the next stage of the bootloader and finally to the application software. The next topic is compression and decompression. The original software is compressed to reduce its size and then it is transmitted to the ECU and then it is decompressed at the receiving end. LZSS is such a popular algorithm for compression and decompression in the embedded world. Okay, now let's talk about fault handling. Bootloader specific events and faults are logged during the execution of bootloader. For example, failure during decompression or reprogramming can be logged by bootloader software. These DTCs or diagnostic trouble codes are accessible during diagnostic session in the bootloader. Another important feature about bootloader is that it makes sure that the software is always upgraded and never downgraded by keeping track of software and hardware versions. Now let's talk about memory layout. The memory layout of embedded systems differs depending on the microcontroller architecture. But in general, most of the microcontrollers store the reset vector along with the other interrupts in the lower code flash address. Hence, it makes sense to store the bootloader also in this area. But this can be different in some controller architectures and can also be changed according to the system requirements. Application is stored after the bootloader ends and for preserving the integrity for both application and bootloader, they are always stored in the continuous locations. 
Bootloader is a vast topic. This video was only about giving the introduction to bootloader. We will discuss about design constraints and its architecture in the coming videos. Till then, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.